All right, so let's take a look at the Archicad interface. So this is what you would probably be interfacing with most of the time. To the top right corner, we have the project name, which is just after the Archicad logo, and then you have the Archicad version that you are using. In my case, Archicad 25. And below that, you have this menu bar, which is present on almost every application you will open in Windows. Not familiar what happens in Mac, but you should also have the menu which has file, edit, view, all the way up to help. And these contain most of the things that we shall be looking at in this interface. And just below that, we have the standard toolbar. So the standard toolbar has some of the most commonly used tools, which include undo, redo, find and select, pick up parameters, inject parameters, and the rest of the things as we shall be talking about them during this course. And if for some reason you cannot see your standard toolbar, you may need to go to window toolbars and go to standard. In this case, we have standard advanced and standard basic. Well, just standard advanced is what we have and that's what you need for this kind of interface. And then after that, we have the info box. Now the info box contains information of anything that's being selected right here. So if I select the arrow, you can see that now we have the information about the arrow that's being displayed here, the different methods you can use the arrow. It's the same thing if I click like the MacQ tool here, you can see the different shapes, the different ways in which we can draw the MacQ, something like that. If I draw something here, you can see that that's one way of drawing. And then you can see that this is another way of drawing that MacQ. And the same is true for these other tools, such as the wall, the comb, the beam. Whenever I do select them, you can see the different parameters that are being presented to us. So the info box shows us the things that we select in the toolbox. So this is the toolbox and it has the design, the viewport and the document. And all of them have different things we shall look at. In the viewport we have, we have sections, elevations, and those are just markers that we bring in if we want to create different kinds of views as we shall be looking at during the course of the training. And then we have the document tab as well, which has the different things that we can use, such as the dimensions and then the spline, the different kinds of lines and fills, which we shall take a look at. Now to the right, we have the navigator pen and this navigator pen or palette or whatever you want to call it is found in window palettes and you have here the navigator so if i select that you can see it disappears and to get it back you can either go back to where we removed it from or you can click on this icon here and this shows up and right now it's not permanently there so you want to right click onto the tab and click here navigator and then it will be embedded to the right just like that. So that's the navigator pen, which is going to help you navigate from the footing to the floor plan and to the roof as well to change different flows, which flows we can access by right clicking and go to story settings. Or well, you can see that shortcut right there. And you can see that we have the footing, the floor plan and the roof. So that's it. So that will be majorly in the project map. So after the project map, we have the view map, which saves different views and we shall talk about it later. And after the view map, we have the layout book. So the layout book is where we will put the things that we will be exporting, for example, in terms of PDF. And then finally you have this publisher, which publisher is going to help us when we want to publish these things to like the beam to the beam outlet but most likely we are going to talk to dwell more on the layout book and the project map so we want to stick on to the project map and now to the bottom here we have the quick options menus so these quick options allow us to navigate much faster for example if i decided to 
click and hold the middle mouse the, the scroll mouse if i click and hold you can see a hand pops up and i can take this to the left of the screen so sometimes you just can't see your work and you want to navigate to it so you might need to just fit to window using just that quick options if you click on fit to window it will be put in the center and if you want to zoom in a particular section you can just click on the increase zoom and make a box around that area and once you release it will be zoomed into that and that will be also the same as the previous zoom if i click on previous zoom we can go out if i click on next zoom it's that one there so this helps to us to toggle between those two zooms we just created and we have a bunch of other options that we shall be looking at during the course of this training such as the scale if you wanted to increase like the scale to 1 to 50 you can see that that becomes bigger but it's the same zoom and everything but at 1 to 50 it becomes bigger at 1 to 200 it becomes smaller so it is something like that so let's go back to one to 100 and well we can decide what layer those things are going to be put on that's it about the 2d layout but then again we also have the different views that we can look at for example for this case we have the south elevation if we open the south elevation we will be taken to here where we are looking at the sort of the front of this model that we are going to be looking at during the course of this training and you can see the different tabs that navig help us navigate quickly to where we want for example if we go to 3d you can see that now we are in the 3d window and we are looking at this thing so how do we navigate in 3d the most common one is you need to press O to orbit such that you can be able to click and hold your left mouse button such that you can sort of move around this very position and you can scroll in or out in order to move around and sort of see what's happening and like we said before we have the hand if you hold down the middle mouse you can you can take it to the right or the left if you hold click and hold there you are and as well we have the 3d explorer if you have played games before you can use the navigations that you usually use the wasd as you can see there so if i say 3d explore now when i move the mouse i am looking where i am going like i would in a game and if i press w i go front if i press s i go backward press a go sideways or the other side with d and c will go down and spacebar will go up c and spacebar so now if i go press w as i move the mouse you can see i can go around this cabin or something like that i actually called it the muji hat not sure why they did that all right that's the quick overview of the interface and now let's get into the process of creating this muji hat